んだ For the record, Lucky Star is usually an anime I wouldn't touch with a 10 foot barge pole. I took one look at the art, and I could already hear every girl in my head giving a sounding aww at the sight of pretty colours and cute little girls dressed in mini school uniforms, before going off and doing more girly things like applying makeup and talking about lesbian sex. And yes, all girls do talk about lesbian sex in their spare time since this is my mind and I can fantasise about whatever the hell I want. Anyway, the only reason I'm doing this is because Waterworks Productions requested that I do a review of the first episode of Lucky Star. Now, I don't believe that you can review an anime just by watching one episode, so this is more of a first impression of the show. And my opinions in this video are subject to change if I actually decide to watch the rest of the series. When I was trying to find a synopsis of the show, I immediately noticed that many people described the anime as being a show about nothing. This perked my curiosity, since when I heard it was a show about nothing, I thought, hmm, a show about nothing. That sounds pretty interesting. But to my disappointment, when I watched it, it was a show about nothing. Which really wasn't as cool as it sounded in my head, or maybe that's just me. The first thing that really hit me about Lucky Star was the opening. I was surprised when I put on the first episode and I was greeted by a noise equivalent to the collective sound of about 100 fangirls squealing simultaneously like I had just caught a glimpse of Brad Pitt. Either that or epilepsy. In the end, I wasn't sure how I should have reacted to probably the most schizophrenic opening ever created. It was the most annoying yet at the same time addictive opening I've witnessed. The experience could probably be replicated by taking an acid trip through Vegas while listening to four female chipmunks sing Japanese karaoke of DDR songs whilst high on speed. I sat there at the end wondering what the hell I just watched and that settled set the tone for the whole episode. I'll say this now instead of waiting for the end of the video. I didn't get the show or at least the episode I watched. It was 10 minutes in before I began to realise I just watched 10 minutes of four girls talking about lesbian sex and how they'd like to get it on with each other. Okay, maybe that wasn't what the girls were talking about, but my mind drifted and it was probably more interesting than what they were talking about anyway, since they spent a full 10 minutes talking about food and how to eat it. It just kept dragging on and I found myself drifting off all the time wondering if it would actually pick up. It really was less fun than drowning. 10 minutes of uninteresting conversation later, and I was left wondering how the show became so popular and how I'd be able to get back the past 20 minutes of my life. Maybe I wasn't enough of a geek to get it considering that I've had more engrossing conversations with my arse in some of the stuff in this episode. It also didn't help that I had little to no knowledge of any references that I've heard makes this show so popular. It's like you were invited to a party by a friend you didn't really know but decided to go anyway. Upon arrival you find that everyone is already in their own group of friends or who have their own buzzwords and in-jokes that you just don't get. And in the end you'll just end up standing at the edge of the group looking awkward making you that guy. Watching Lucky Star made me feel like that guy in the sense that I felt everyone else watching it was laughing while I just sat there chuckling awkwardly to myself in my best attempts to understand the jokes. I also get the feeling that the other reason that Lucky Star is popular is a certain character named Kanata, mainly because Kanata represents about 99.9% .9 of the target demographic, i.e. you, and partly because it's impossible for the nerds not to get a huge nerd stiffy when we find out it's the same person who voiced Harahi, even if in this case it's from a character that doesn't look like she's reached puberty yet. Though I suppose it's acceptable to get huge nerd stiffies to characters whose collective ages add up to about 12 these days, as long as they're Japanese and you can perfectly accept that they're in high school and still keep a straight face. All in all, I can see why people would like this, but I just don't think it's my type of anime. Who knows, maybe the series is completely different after the first episode and actually becomes entertaining. Perhaps I'll have to wait till I've seen more anime or play more games or become fat and overweight and completely lose my sex life before this anime appeals to me. Until then, I'll leave the rabid fanbase to its own devices, while I try to compensate for my loss of testosterone by doing manly things like work out and talk about women and think about lesbian sex all day.